Good evening, everyone. It's Travis with CoCap, Watch Collectors of California and Beyond with another full watch review. Tonight, we're gonna to be looking at the Vesuviet Adivo Chrono. Really nice looking timepiece. I've been wearing this uh, quite a bit and I thoroughly have enjoyed it. Um, this is a brand that was founded in 2019 by Singapore brand owner Yap Kong Wong who is just a great guy. I've been working with him and, and known him for a few years now and a super nice person to, to work with. Uh, previous watches, I'll set that down just for a second. We do have the Volare GMT that they had. I'm fortunate enough to actually have these two in my collection. Really enjoyed them as well. And then the previous Adivo, which was a non-chrono. So these have been great watches for me as well. And then again tonight, we're going to be looking at the Adivo Chrono. Vesuvius refers to the volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius. And you can see their logo there has the nice like fireball on that. Um, the Adivo Chrono is presented basically as a kind of an elegant everyday tool watch. And you can see just looking at it, it's got some, some great features. That dial looks amazing. And those sub-dials... They are uh, grooved, and you can see the sunburst as well in them, so really some nice touches there. Um, full disclosure, this watch was given to me by Yap Kong Wong for doing the, the review. That will not affect the review in any way, but I did want to let you know. So what makes a CoCab review different? Uh, a few things. Uh, one is we're going to talk about the characteristics, so that's the C in CoCab. Two, we're going to talk about the operations and experiences the good, the bad, the ugly, that's the O. Cool and unique features is the next C, the things I love about the watch. Accessibility and price, can the average person afford this watch? And then B is brand offerings and info. So we'll jump right into it with the characteristics. Uh, we're looking at the pale yellow version. This is also available in black, maroon brown, pastel blue, salmon, and white. And the white is full loom. I will remind you this at the end, but I did want to let you know this watch just went on Kickstarter last night. So it's got some uh, opportunities there with an incredible price that I'll tell you about towards the, the end. So updates of this watch over the first Adivo, of course, the Chrono, that's really cool. The two sub dials. And then this has the Siegel ST1940 movement, uh, where the original had the Miyota 9015. And I really like this Siegel movement. We'll be looking at that here in just a bit. All right, basic specs. This watch is 14.4 millimeters high. Looks like I've got some fingerprints right there on it. Sorry about that. Uh, it weighs about 176 grams with all the links. I have eight and a quarter inch wrists, and this is just a little bit big. This could probably fit an eight and a half inch wrist uh, fairly easily. Diameter, let's take a look at that. It's 39 millimeters across. 43.5 with the crown. Uh, it is water resistant to 100 meters. I think you can see that printed there on the dial. So that's uh, that's pretty good. That should be plenty for swimming and free skin dive, free diving or skin diving or things like that. And it does have a one year uh, warranty. The dial of course shows the Vesuviet at the top there. Uh, it has the orange fireball logo. Atavo in red, which is nice. That matches the red chronograph uh, hand. Uh, automatic, 100 meters or 330 feet, and all that. the rest of that's printed in, in black there. Uh, the subdials are beautiful textured subdials with concentric guilloche pattern and the sunburst that we kind of mentioned there, uh, both with a great black outline, which really kind of stands out on the watch, and, and it, it's just a great design, I think, for this dial. Uh, the 3 o'clock is a 30-minute timer with a 30 at the 12 o'clock position, and um, the... Nine o'clock position is basically the normal uh, running seconds hand. So there you have that. The hands are all centrally positioned for the main dial, the hour, minute, and second. And then of course the uh, sub dial hands are there at the three and nine. The minute and hour hand are polished, uh, a frame with a loomed interior. And uh, let me just go ahead, we'll, we'll get to the loom in a second, but I'm just gonna go ahead and Kind of charge that loom there, just give you an idea of what it looks like. There you can see it looks really good. Doesn't show as great in the light here, but still you can get an idea on it. Um, and the short 
white hands on the subdials do have a little bit of loom, not a ton. The Chrono Seconds is bright red, again matching the Adivo, and it does not have a loom on it. The indices are loomed small squares at the 369, you can see all of those, and then a double square at the 12 o'clock, and then the room loomed rectangles at all other five minute intervals around the dial. And you'll notice if you look close, I'll try to get the light to show it, each of those indices has a nice polished frame. There you go, you can see it at kind of the two o'clock um, frame around each one, which catches the light and just gives it a nice look as you're going through your day. Same thing with those polished hands, they really catch the, the light very well. Uh, the loom on this is BGW9 Super Luminova Grade A. That gives uh, excellent afterglow performance. It's Swiss made, non-radioactive, and again, applied to all hands other than the chronograph seconds. The bezel you'll see is a fixed bezel, 45 degree angle all the way around there. Crystal is a two millimeter thick. Let me give you a view here of that. I have to use both hands here. There you can kind of see the doming to it. It's just a slight uh, dome, but it's two millimeters thick sapphire crystal with five layers of inner anti-reflective coating. And uh, that has an incredible hardness of, of 2000 HV, which we're gonna talk about HV here right now, actually, as we talk about the case. The case is one of the coolest features of this watch, as well as the uh, bracelet. It is 316L steel. But it's not just 316L stainless steel. It also has advanced thermochemical surface treatment for superior scratch and wear resistance. And this takes the normal HV of 316L stainless steel from 222, and HV stands for Vic Vickers Hardness. And with that thermochemical surface treatment, it takes that to 1100 HV. So this beautiful case that you can see will stay looking beautiful for a, a long, long time. Uh, that's comparable to hard chrome, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And just a special note, that's not a coating. That is where they actually treat the surgical stainless steel, um, so it's not something that's gonna peel or break off or, or anything like that. So pretty, uh, pretty cool case and bracelet there. The crown, let's look at that. It's in the three o'clock position. You can see it's signed right there. We'll kind of light it up. It doesn't really have a loom, but I thought it might show up better with the with this. But it's got their logo right on there. And this is kind of cool because it is unidirectional, so it looks great in whatever position you end up uh, leaving it in. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. The crown is seven millimeters in diameter. It has um, 36 grooves, really good grip, no problem with that at all. And um, it does have slight integrated crown guards. You can see those right there. All right, let's take a look at the lugs. You can see we've got really kind of short lugs, if you will, on this. They're not drilled. Um, they do have a double-sided quick-release spring bar. You can see it here on this side and here on this side. So that makes getting the, the bracelet off much, much easier. Uh, one of the cool things, too, by the way, is when you take this off, this last piece with some, when you take the spring bar out, it falls off. It's integrated right into the bracelet. You don't have to worry about losing that. The spring bar will slide out, so you do have to watch uh, that. The lug width is 16 millimeters, so it's got a special kind of integrated type bracelet there. So it's 16 millimeters, and lug to lug is 46.2 millimeters for your lug to lug. Uh, let's look at the case back now. We've seen the front. Let's take a look at the back. So I love this case back. It's got the exhibition case back. It does have a sapphire crystal with, again, AR coating on the inside. And look at that rotor. Oh, my goodness, that looks great. You can see it's signed. You can see the, the gilt, the decorations in it. And then just the ST19 movement itself. I mean, it's just... A marvel. I, I love this movement. I just think it looks wonderful. So uh, this is basically the automatic version of the famous Swiss-made Venus 175. Uh, it does have the bi-directional rotor for winding it. 33 joules, 40-hour power reserve. Uh, it beats at 21,600 beats per hour. And it's typically accurate from minus 10 to plus 40 seconds per day. 
All right, we've talked some about the bracelet, but just as a reminder, the whole thing is the Harden 316L stainless steel. You'll see the texture, now that I've got my fingerprints all over it, the texture is a beautiful polished center with a brushed outside, so it just looks great. And once you put it on, of course, you can run a polishing cloth over it and it stays looking pretty good uh, through the day. Um, this tapers from about 24.6 millimeters at the lugs down to about 20 millimeters, I'm sorry, 22 millimeters at the clasp. There are solid links connected with push pins, not screws, and you can remove them fairly easy with a watch tool hammer and a 0.9 millimeter to one millimeter uh, pin punch. Uh, the clasp, let's look at that. Looks great, and it's got the Vesuvian logo and name. It is the Butterfly Deployant Clasp. We want to look at the beautiful inside, a little bit of perlage work there on that clasp. Really like that. Um, overall, just a fantastic looking watch. Catches the eye from everything from the dial to the bracelet to just everything. A lot of little details to look at there. Uh, the packaging, let's take a look at that. I'll set the watch down right here. Here's the packaging it came in. So you've got the outside sleeve. Then you've got an inner cardboard box. Let's take a look there, if I can get that to come out. Shouldn't have closed it all the way up, apparently. All right, there we go. You've got the owner's card. This is also, by the way, 316L stainless steel. So you've got a nice, thick card there. So that looks great. And then inside the, the box, you also have a nice leather watch pouch again signed with both the name and the logo so some good stuff there all right so let's move on to the operations and experiences this is what really makes a difference i think with how a watch is to be used so a uh, winding let me unscrew the crown there winding is very smooth has just the right amount of tension it's what you would expect i think feels great uh setting the time it out no problem at all uh very little give only about six uh i'm sorry one ninth i think it was six grooves or something but anyway one ninth of a turn before it starts uh engaging so that's pretty cool uh putting on and taking it off are very comfortable thanks to that butterfly clasp um screw down crown is about six partial turns to screw it down so I'll show you that there you go. And um, removing and replacing the bracelet with those quick release spring bars. I'll show you those again. It was actually very easy to take off. It is a little more difficult to replace, at least with my big fingers. Uh, once I used my, uh, I think it's pronounced Bergian 7767 spring bar tool, I was able to get it right on. Um, and then the pushers, they work as expected. Here we'll see the chrono. Have the nice satisfying click, the proper amount of resistance. And we'll stop it again and then reset it. And it snaps right back into place. So that's pretty cool. So lots of good uh, experiences. What could be improved? So one thing I noticed, and you'll probably see it too, is that red chronograph hand is not quite centered. You can see it's a little bit over on the right hand side there of both the logo, uh, the name, and then the two little squares at 12 o'clock. So that's a little bit off, nothing huge, but did want to point that out. Um, also the screw down crown, you may have noticed, it unscrews super easily, it's, it's perfect. But when you do go to screw it in, it uh, takes a little bit for it to catch, and then it is a little tight as you screw it in. So I have to do more uh, pressure on, on it than I do on most of my watches to screw in. So again, not a big deal, but I want you to be aware of it. Uh, nit nitpicking a little bit, the um, unscrewed crown also has a little bit of give, nothing bad, but let's see if I can get it to show you. So you can see that moving a little bit. Nothing bad, but just a little bit. Uh, no drilled lugs, that's just a matter of personal preference, but I really like the, the drilled lugs. And then this does need custom leather straps if you want to have leather straps. You wouldn't be able to use uh, your own unless you went with a 16 millimeter. So those are a few of the little things. Uh, the cool and unique things about this, and what I love, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, first of all, that Seagull ST1940 movement. That thing is just beautiful. It is really a work of art. 
So I love that. I love that rotor. Look at how that catches the light as it turns around there. It's just beautiful. So love those. Um, the two sub dials with the kind of record album finish, those look fantastic. Really set that dial off. The quick disconnect bracelet, that's such a nice feature. Just love that. Uh, and then another cool thing is this does have special leather straps available and they do look amazing. I don't have one in person, but I was looking at the pictures of them and they just look amazing on it. So that's pretty cool that there is that option if uh, you want it. Did want to mention also one of the cool things is this watch just went live on Kickstarter. And unlike most Kickstarter campaigns, it's available right now. You're not going to, you, if you back it, you won't have to wait for the watch to be produced. It is ready right now. So that's uh, pretty cool. All right. Oh, and there are 192 of the watches uh, already available. So, so that's what you have on the Kickstarter. Okay, accessibility. That's the A in CoCab and the price. Can the average person afford to buy this watch? Absolutely, yes. Uh, especially with the Kickstarter price. It's $375 during the Super Early Bird. Uh, that's for the first 100 pieces. And then it's $425 for the next 92 pieces at the early bird price. And then on the website, it will be $475 after the Kickstarter is over. But again, the Kickstarter just started and you have 13 days. Today is August the 2nd, by the way. Once it's on the website, there is a code of Vesuvian offer and you can get an extra 7% off, which would bring it down to 442. And all of those prices do include uh, shipping with FedEx delivery, I believe it is. So some good stuff there. All right, some more information about the brand, brand offerings. That's the B in the CoCab. Um, first of all, their website is vesuviate.com, V-E-S-U-V-I-A-T-E.com. There is a, a lot of nice little videos and reviews, and there's an instructional video for removing the links from the bracelet. Lots of good stuff there. You can check out the other models, and um, you can also look for the Kickstarter link. So... Overall, I just love this watch. I've been wearing it and enjoying it for quite some time. So thanks for watching. Uh, please put your comments below and uh, please let me know if there's anything that I didn't cover and I'll be glad to answer it in the, the comments and have a fantastic rest of the day.